So yeah, early on, uh, I'll probably be dying a lot, just a heads up, like way more than Dark Souls 1. I'm gonna die a lot in this game, uh, and we're gonna be hollow for a lot of it. And uh, once we have more human effigies, we can worry more about, we can worry more about uh, using the effigies to reverse the hollowing. But at the beginning of the game, I'm gonna care very little about bothering with that, because we're gonna die a lot, especially given our starting class, which is very weak. Very weak. And yeah, people were saying that uh, the world's very different. It, it really is. This game is just so different than the first Dark Souls in many, many ways. It share, it, there are similarities, but overall, like, it's... it's. I would say it's more different than similar. That's not... Uh, I don't know. That's hard to say. Homeward Bone, getting some, some crunchable souls. That's good. There's another ogre we'll come back to later once we have a better weapon and or soul arrows to kill him with. Alright, here's our first versions of Apollo soldiers. Oh, okay, you're not dead. Good start. There are also... The bonfires in this game are much more plentiful. So, like, here's one already. They definitely ramped up the difficulty in Scholar of the First Sin. Yeah, I, from what I've read, that is definitely the case. There are way, just way more enemies all over the place. Alright, come on over here, fool. So, your weapon equipment actually repairs uh, at every, every time you sit at a bonfire. But if it breaks, then you have to spend souls to get it fixed. So that's certainly different. There are also, in this game, people talk about getting ganked in gank squads a lot because there are so many enemies everywhere. In Dark Souls 1, the enemy placement felt very particular. In this game, they're just everywhere. There's so many enemies all over the place. See, like, I got hit there. I guess my poise was high enough, but I still got hit. I took the damage. Stuff like that. It's gonna be... That's gonna happen a lot. There's also a bunch of enemies here, so... The archers also are, like, flipping gods in this game. Enemy archers are insanely accurate. The projectiles don't don't uh, curve, but they're just so much better at uh, tracking your movements. We're very, very close to a straight sword, though. Or a, at least a broken straight sword. I don't think we have the stats to use an actual straight sword. Also, parrying is a lot harder in this game, and it's very much dependent on your shield. So, I will not be parrying very much, because I'm very bad at it. I might try some experimentation, but don't expect too much from me on the parrying side of things. I might try to do a parry kill on the Pursuer, though, just because it's fun. Could you get past the Anne Orlando windows in Dark Souls 2? <laughs> Probably not. This next area will highlight how many enemies tend to show up in one spot. But as usual, I'm going to be playing very careful. Very careful. Green blossoms just like uh, Dark Souls 1. Just increase stamina regeneration. There are also torches everywhere. Uh, I'd like to light them all. Just because I like to do it. Sometimes it helps with stuff. Sometimes they're just, it's just light the torch to light the torch. And, uh, I will probably just be going out of my way to find and light all of them. So, like, once I clear this zone out, I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna light my torch. I'm gonna bring it up here. I'm gonna light this, uh, light this brazier. See, all of these are, like, fake playing dead hollows. So, I'm just grabbing them one at a time. There is one NPC later in the game that you can sell stuff to. So I'll be holding on to anything duplicate that I have for later. Alright.
notice that the enemy tracking is like bizarrely crazy in this game compared to the first game. So trying to circle is like hugely countered in this game. You can't just circle, circle, circle around enemies like you would in the first game. There's our Estus. You can see how slow it takes to use in this game. Much, much different. thought DS2 was far better because of graphics. I mean, it definitely looks nicer. It's a prettier looking game. Soul of a Nameless Soldier. See you later. We'll get you later. When they do that overhead swing, that's when you back... I mean, I, I've played this game before, thank you. <laughs> but I'm saying, when, when enemies are gearing up to hit you, the amount of tracking that they do is actually pretty insane. It's not until they actually attempt to land a swing that uh, you can attempt to do any sort of countering. Also, a lot of enemies have crazy high poise comparatively. So, like, you might think you'd stagger enemies, especially, like, these early hollows. It's easy to stagger them. But at a lot of enemies later in the game, their poise is so insane that unless you're two-handing a two-handed weapon, you probably won't stagger a lot of enemies. Or at least don't count on it, I should say. You should never rely on it. That guy's still alive, unfortunately. I think there's a broken straight sword, which I think would honestly be better than a dagger right now. I have to hesitate every time I attack just because the dagger range is so short that I can't really risk swinging and not hitting. Because every attack pushes them away. Let's just, uh, let's just use a broken sword. It's shitty, but it has a longer reach. You might say, wow, there's a lot of enemies in this game. And I would say, get used to it. <laughs> Look at how many enemies are in this one room. Granted, they're all inert. But as you get for further into the game, they all will come alive. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be, like, super completionist. I do plan on... Well, I guess this counts as being completionist. I was going to say I'm probably going to try to kill every boss. Which I guess is essentially completionist in Dark Souls. I don't know if I'm going to, like, try to find every single possible item. If I miss some stuff or stuff requires major backtracking, then yeah. I might not do that. Okay, so we cleared this out. There's an item up here that I want to go and get. Then we can go light our torch at the bonfire, since we're going to be going down in that direction anyway. Actually, this is not. Dropping in more enemies is not more difficult. I agree. <laughs> A lot of people agree. It's hard in other ways also, so don't assume that that's the only thing that's challenging. So we have the option to light a torch at the bonfires instead. I'm gonna try to make my way to the next bonfire and then I'll walk to Majula, spend my souls. One thing, because you can't level up at every bonfire, you have to keep in mind that you should go and spend your souls every time you're able to uh, at Majula, as opposed to waiting, because if you get too far in and then you can't recover, then, you know, bad news. Bad news bears. I don't know the purpose of lighting that torch, but I did it anyway. 
You consider being completionist as completing every NPC questline, killing every boss, and exploring every area as best I can. Got it. Beware of ambush, then trio. Hello, sir. Nice, uh, that was good. You got me. I bounced off the wall. I can't really, can't really say anything about that. We also got a short sword, like an actual short sword. Oh, okay, hang on. Like I said, the beginning of this game, kind of arduous because we have no, no better items, any, no better possible items, really. It's just what we've got. Also, we have really bad stats. Our stats are really spread out, so it's going to be really challenging to equip anything worthwhile as uh, an explorer, at least until later. Some wood bolts. Yeah, see, 7 and 10. We're relatively close, but... Mm, this just leads in here, right? Yeah. How did you get Warcraft 3 to patch 1.29? Um, I own the game. I logged into Battle.net and it updated. Patience. Also, you get stun locked really, really easily in this game. Go back to the dagger for now. But yeah, you get stun locked like crazy, so that's why you have to play very, very safe early on. Um. We have another broken straight sword, I guess, that we can equip. Or we just stick with the dagger. Hello, my friend. Let's run by you. See, and that's where I like, you would think you could raise your shield in time. In Dark Souls 1, you most likely would have been able to raise your shield. I was unable to raise my shield. <laughs> so, definitely different. Please stop that. I'm also being shot by archers behind me. But yeah, a lot of enemies have these combos where if you get hit by the first one, you're most likely going to get hit by, oh, many, many more. <laughs> so you have to be more careful when engaging in this game, which is tricky because enemies just come out of nowhere. A lot more gank squads in this game. You like the daggers movesets, quick slashes? Yeah, it's okay. Buy something, anything. Here's our game's version of the undead merchants. My name is Melentia. You're a stranger to this land. Oh, we get to strangers these days. Everybody's gonna run off. <laughs> Drang Lake's been a pile of rubble since the war, thought long, long ago. And the giants crossed the sea. Seemed like the battles would never end. Poor folk like myself have nary a place to sleep. I swear I keep all me things right with me. You may travel light, 
but methinks you bear a burden of your own. They say these trees grew from the remains of the giants. From each carcass sprouted new life growing into what you see now. But do you know what they all say, say? Don't believe what an old hag says. <laughs> it's high time that I pick up a move. I've a bargain for you. Next time we meet my lover. Okay, well, we'll grab some items from her when we see her. She'll move to Majula. There's really nothing from her worth buying that we can even use right now. She sells some effigies, which is cool. Let's grab this key. She also sells Soul Arrow. We can grab that from her at any time. Bonfire. It's sort of a miracle I haven't died yet. <laughs> Okay, looking good. We'll go back to Majula soon. These are just people. Hmm. I don't know what we need to open that door, actually. I think it's the soldier's key. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Majula, pop my crunchable souls. You can warp bonfires straight from the beginning. There are so many more bonfires in this game. And also this game is huge comparatively uh, to Dark Souls 1. So it's just, it's just wildly different. Who are you? Oh, it doesn't matter. Just help me open this door. I packed my tools in here, seeing it was vacant. But now somebody's gone and locked the door. Okay, well, we just bought the key from Alentia. We also have a Titanite Shard, and I think we're about to get another one. Nope, that's a short bow. <laughs> Whatever. Here's your door, buddy. Ah, yes. Very good. Now I can get to work. But first, let me set up. Come again later. You can break down that door? Eh, I guess I'm not really in a rush. I'll wait until I get the key anyway. Um, okay, so let's crunch some souls. There's also so many bosses in this game, I definitely plan on crunching uh, boss souls. Is that a shard you found? This guy's build that we're looking at right here, that's what I'm going for later. So that I may help you. Roaring Halberd, light, Sunset Staff. Alright. I should have done this earlier. I had the, I had the shard this whole time. It's Titanite Lizard and two chests. Yeah, we can go back. We can go back later. Okay, let's level up. So what do we need for the short sword? We need some strength and dex. So for now. Let's do it like this. I think we're still stuck with the dagger, unfortunately. Uh, because there is an item further on that I'd like to get, but we're not close to it yet. As, as I was saying, the beginning of this game is going to be a lot harder as the adventurer or explorer because of our stat spread. But that's okay. We'll stick with this for a while. We might die a couple times. And we'll just collect some souls. And if we have to backtrack to talk to her and level up so that we don't lose a bunch, then that's what we'll do. But we've got this Crimson Parma. Which is decent. It's good. It's a good uh, casting shield early on because the stat requirements are really low. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> nice jump back. I'll try to rely on backstabs a lot early because of this. That door's locked. 
Pretty much everything down here is locked for now. There's a torch in the next room that I demand be lit, and if I don't do it now, I'll forget. I basically, at the end of my original playthrough that I played offline by myself, well, I mean, I played online, but I didn't stream it is what I mean by offline. I ended up going to a melee hex build, and it was really fun, but I only played it at the end of the game because I was forced to. Because of the flippin', um... Just because the DLC, everything is magic resistant. Everything. So you sort of have to, uh... So you sort of have to just, uh, get some sort of physical build going. Anytime there's a skeleton, you'll see, don't give up, skeleton! I don't know if it's someone, like, don't give up, skeleton, like, talking to the skeleton, or if it's, don't give up, sincerely, this dead skeleton. I don't know, but in any case, I enjoy it. Deprived is the one with 11 across the board? No, it's with 6 across the board. Very, very low. Okay, let's get as much work done as we can here. We do have two Estes, so that's nice. Yep, that's who I was looking for. Come on over here, asshole. Let's go. See, that's like the short sword backstab animation. It's real weird. Daggers and spears are really satisfying, but the sword backstab animations are really stupid looking. Hello? So we don't have a 100% uh, block shield, but it's good enough for now, I'd say. And the enemy archers are like flipping snipers at this point, so you gotta be extra careful with them. Okay, we're getting, like, we're getting shot at from multiple directions, so I'm just gonna go for now. We can always come back and kill some of these fellas later. But, like, right now, I'm not gonna mess around with... You can also, uh, use sprinting to go up ladders, and it looks really fucking stupid, if that's not obvious. But it's like, of course I'm gonna do it, but it just looks really dumb. Revenge, indeed. Hello, sir. I'd love to learn how to parry these guys. I just, I'm just really bad at it. Maybe one day. See, they, they circle perfectly. Very hard to get around for a backstab now. I'm also being shot at. So, like, again, at the beginning, I'm going to be re just really, really patient and careful compared to later when I'll be able to be a little more aggressive. It's just the game is hard early, in my opinion. Like, it's not an easy start, especially with the character that I've chosen. All right, let's go unlock another NPC for Majula. Random trap. There's only one. So my goal, I guess I could try to go for it pretty early, is to get the fire longsword. And I'm not 100% sure what the stats requirements are on it. Goodbye, sir. But I think it's like 11 strength, 
ten decks or something. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just daydreaming, I think. My name is Kale. I am a traveler like yourself. I'm navigating the continent to create a map. Why cartography, you ask? I didn't. Well, We're going to skip well, a lot of this. Yeah. He's an explorer. But I do. I came to this Drang Lake, the Lost. Have you seen the jeweler? I made it my temporary home. Well, as something of a squatter, I'm afraid. Inside the mansion, I found a strange map, like none I'd ever seen. I believe that it's a map of Drenlek. Now I'm traveling the land to prove it. Yes, yes, that's it. That's why I came to the kingdom. Wait, no, that wasn't it. Then what? I don't seem to recall. So this is common with a lot of the NPCs, where they're sort of confused on what they're doing. It's all about this hollowing process and losing your mind. Were you looking for that map? Wonderful. Then you are fascinated by maps, just like me. Shame on you. You should have told me before. Here, take this. A key to the mansion. Great. What a joy to meet a kindred spirit out here. Incredible, really, isn't it? Oh, I would not vent that I can't be something about. I'll be back, perhaps we... I'll be perhaps... So yeah, it's important to exhaust all the dialogue of a lot of the NPCs, because they won't, they won't go back to Majula until after you talk to them. Okay, so there's one other area I want to check out in this side before we go back to Cardinal Tower and go a different way. You have the stats for a bow? I guess I could. I don't know if I have enough, if I have any arrows. Let's check. I don't, I don't have the stats for the bow. I need 12 decks. So the covenant that I'm in is called Way of the Blue, and it basically means that if you get invaded, if there is there if there's anybody that is uh, a blue sentinel, which is a different covenant, they will be summoned to come and help you. Maybe. Uh, I tried to play a blue sentinel and did not get summoned once in like two hours that I had the ring on. So I'm not really convinced that it works, or it might have just been a level. Oh my god, it might have just been like a level thing. wary of death. I don't even remember what's down here, but that connects oh, down here. Again, especially early on, it's so important to be diligent about your surroundings because it's so easy to miss stuff at this point in the game and everything is important. Everything is important. Almost died. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Uh, back to Cardinal Tower, because there's nowhere else to go down here. That monocle doesn't even have glass in it? I know, it's just for show. Uh, we could go up there. There's a shortcut back to Cardinal Tower, but we have to try to actually open it, which is surprisingly challenging. Barrels blow up if they get hit. So let's see if we can bait this guy into killing himself. Maybe. Yep. Got him. Another problem people have with the combat in this game, and I am one of those people, is a lot of enemies appear to have just unlimited stamina. Whereas in the first game, it was very clear that enemies had their own hidden stamina bars that they had to adhere to. In this game, they just keep attacking and attacking and attacking, and you're like, when does it stop? When does it end? And it never ends. It never does. They just they just attack through eternity. 
There are some enemies that are more egregious than others. There's a shortcut here. I'm gonna try to open up. Actually, no. Oh, wait! Never mind! He did it for us! Thanks, buddy. And we're back in Cardinal Tower. Thanks for opening that up. There's some randomly destructible walls in this game. I don't know where they all are, but I randomly did find this one at one point, so... Back to Majula. Okay, did we pick up any crunchies? We have one crunchy. 200 souls, baby. Bearer of six, six, less this Unfortunately, she says something every time you want to talk to her to level up. Cool. Alright, next step. I'm gonna go and try and pick up the fire longsword. It's extremely good, and by picking it up, I think we will kill enough stuff to be able to wield it. We have to level up probably to dex 11, maybe 10, I'm not sure, but... The Fire Longsword will carry us through the game, and we'll, we can spend Titanite Shards on it right away. That is the plan. So now we'll come out a different way. Hello, good sir. Please, stop, stop. See what I mean, though? If you get hit by the first part of the combo, you're going to get hit by the entire combo. Another interesting thing about this game, I'm enjoying to just talk about all the random shit that's in this game that's different from the first game. Uh, enemies only respawn a set amount of times. I'm just gonna go back and sit real quick. Uh, enemies only respawn a set a number of times. Usually it's like 10 or 12. Might be more, might be less, depending on the enemy and its placement. So if I respawn this guy 10 times or 12 times, he'll stop respawning completely. And I think that's to stop people from abusing like a soul farming thing. Yeah, okay. I guess backstabs are just not a thing today. But anyway, I find that particularly interesting. I also have these witching urns, or at least I did, that I should equip. I don't need the poison moss. I should be using that if necessary. Fall damage, also a pretty consistent thing that you have to deal with in this game. That kind of sucks. It's everywhere. There's always, there's fall damage all over the place. Wow, I did not expect that would kill him. Plunging attack's not very strong either in this game, comparatively. Used to be really strong, not as strong anymore. Again, so I'm currently going to try to find a weapon that will carry, not carry me, but it'll be a huge improvement, and hopefully we'll have enough souls to level it up. That's the goal. That's the eventual goal, at least. Uh-oh. Good start. <laughs> Second death. Re first real death. The first death that I had was... Pretty much unavoidable, but... Probably be dying a lot to falling. I expect that. Get used to it. This guy always aggros when you leave, so might as well just kill him. Get the souls as well. Because we're at a point in the game where every enemy kill helps when we need to meet minimum requirements for weapons as a flippin' explorer. See? Well, we were a little off that time, admittedly. Good try, buddy. Getting a lot of throwing knives. I should equip those, actually. Those really don't hurt to have. Those do a decent amount of damage at this point. I can understand why enemies would spawn a set number of times. Not only does it force the player to proceed through the game, it also limits what they can drop. Uh, indeed. Also, it uh, it stops you from 
Yeah, it stops you from farming, and it also, like, if you, if, if there's just an enemy boss that's taking you forever, and you kill the enemies enough times on the way to them, then it just is basically saying, like, look, I know what this boss, or I know what these enemies do, I'm sufficient to kill them, so please just let me pass. Just allow me to proceed, please. Which I agree with, I think that's reasonable. Okay, looking good. If I could learn how to parry, man, <laughs> that would be so useful, especially early in this game. The reposting is weird in this game. It's it's so different. I really dislike it. I'll be able to show it to you if it ever, if I can ever properly parry. But I'm at the point where I don't really want to risk wasting my time dying. Maybe like on an enemy that's right by a bonfire, we could test it out at one point, but. Bandit's knife might be a okay choice. <laughs> it's 11 dexterity. Give me a fucking break. Oh my god. He dodged it. He is a flippin' god. I've learned to try not to hit enemies as they're running at you, because they probably have some sort of move set that allows them to, like, instantly hit you. This guy's just a blatant trap. So let's... Let's try a witching urn on these guys, see how it does. Not great. <laughs> we gotta take these guys one at a time, but they give us a lot of souls if we can take them out. But don't stand directly behind them, because they fall on you. But this is what I'm saying with, like, the seemingly unlimited stamina. They attack, they barely wait, and then they instantly are able to start swinging again. Okay, that works pretty well on their front. Go for it. 600 souls. Alright, that's great. Again, we're in an area right now where it's it would be so easy to die. It's just not worth taking too many risks. I'm down here to try to grab one item, and hopefully we can get it without without getting murdered, but it doesn't take I guess it doesn't take that long to get down here. This is what those witching urns are for. <laughs> Might as well use them. And it doesn't cost stamina to use them either. See, and he can attack immediately after a combo like that. It's That's what's frustrating about the combat. Because, like, when it happens, you're, the first immediate thought is, like, this is bullshit. And then you're like, well, it's Dark Souls. I guess it's supposed to be that way. But no, that's... It does seem like, like bullshit, <laughs> in my opinion. Just like total garbage. Now, unfortunately, in order to get what I'm looking for, we do have to run by an enemy that's extremely strong, so we just have to kind of cross our fingers and hope that we can get through it. Is that a turtle? It is, yeah, it's like a turtle knight. It's like an armored turtle, man. Iframes, baby. Iframes, baby. Okay, we got it. Okay, let's see. Oh, I'm like, why am I hollow? It's because I died. Oh, okay, we already have the stats to wield this. 
I have nine decks? I do have nine decks. Wow! That was perfect planning on my part. I am a genius. I am a master. Soul of a proud knight. It's good to see you, my friend. Soul of a proud knight. I apologize if that was loud, but... It's exciting. We haven't seen Mr. Soul of a Proud Knight for a long time. So yeah, eventually, uh, we can get to the room behind the fire-breathing lizard, and there's a bunch more of them. That's going to be way, 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 way later in the game, though. But we will get there eventually. So now we've got the fire longsword, which is basically just a longsword that's already uh, infused with fire. So thanks, game. Thanks for giving that to us. As you can see, now we're in like a much better spot than we were. This is a flippin' dream comparatively. So let's get some kills and farm some kills so that we can start leveling up uh, intelligence as soon as possible. Now, because my adaptability is so high, that's why my rolls are effective. I mean, I don't know if that's 100% true, but I think our rolls are a little more effective because of that adaptability stat. Whereas... Uh, again, it increases the number of iframes you have when you roll. And I think you need something like 20 or 25 adaptability for it to become comparable to what you what a Dark Souls 1 roll was in terms of iframes. Which is ridiculous, if you ask me. So I use it less for the iframes and more just to get out of the way, at least at the beginning of the game. Later in the game, though, we'll be hugely reliant on rolls, especially for, like, DLC bosses and such. Firebombs? No firebombs. Why do you look like an actual cliche green zombie? <laughs> With the monocle. <laughs> That's the best. We already killed this man, didn't we? Alright, great. Okay. So, we've done everything I think that I need. I am going to... Once again go back to Majula. And I can put some... Now that I, now that I have the weapon that I plan on using for a while, I can put some Titanite into it. And we're good to go.